As a Muslim, if you reject the deity of Christ, if you reject his death on the cross for your sin, you will go to hell, Jesus said. But doesn't in the same context of the Bible, does it say not to judge? Isn't that passing judgment? Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I am God. I've never seen that. I want to say, if you're truly God, God doesn't have kids. God doesn't have human, humanistic, I, I beget. God was not begotten, he doesn't beget. This Muslim woman asks three tough questions that every Muslim will ask you as a Christian. And Cliff gives three brilliant responses. So we're going to see what he has to say and I'll give my thoughts throughout. Let's dive in. So as a Muslim, I wouldn't go to heaven. As a Muslim, if you reject the deity of Christ, if you reject his death on the cross for your sin, you will go to hell, Jesus said. But doesn't in the same context of the Bible, does it say not to judge? Isn't that passing judgment? Mm -hmm. By saying that I'll go to hell because I'm Muslim, you essentially are judging me and taking on the role of God, who was the only one who can pass judgment, who was the only one who will deem who will enter his kingdom, correct? Good question. Slavery is wrong. Am I being judgmental? Slavery is wrong. Slavery is something that was done in the name with the justification of Christianity. Okay, now please answer my question. When I say slavery is wrong, am I being judgmental? No, that's common sense. That's common sense. If I say the rape of a woman is wrong, is that me being judgmental? No. If I say the followers of David Koresh and Jimmy Jones made a big mistake, is that being judgmental? No. Nope. Okay. When Jesus says, judge not, lest he be judged, he's not saying, suspend your critical thinking and accept everything is equally valid. Because 14 verses later in Matthew 7, 15, Jesus says, beware of false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ferocious wolves. Now, Muhammad claimed to be a prophet of God. And when you read the Quran and take it seriously, obviously Muhammad contradicts Jesus. If I'm a follower of Christ, and I believe that Jesus is reliable, be it Muhammad, be it Joseph Smith, I'm going to say, I'm sorry, I'm convinced those are false prophets. That's not me being self-righteously judgmental. It's a simple issue of truth. Christ made some truth claims. Muhammad made some truth claims. They contradict. My Muslim friends look me in the face and say, Cliff, you're going to hell. It's not being judgmental on their part. I've read the Quran. I know they're right. If Muhammad spoke the truth, I am going to hell. Because I'm an idolater, I worship Jesus. Another thing you can highlight when people say this is just to take them to the passage. Yes, Jesus says, judge not that you be not judged. But what people don't realize is that very shortly after that, he says how we should judge, just not hypocritically. He says, first, take the log out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. So Jesus is condemning hypocritical judgment, not all judgment whatsoever. And also, just saying what the Bible says is actually not really judgment, it's just speaking the word of God, which we are all called to do. In in the sense of contradicting, what do you, I don't, I don't understand, when you say that Muhammad um, Salah, contradicts, do you, sure. I don't understand. You bet. You Repe repeatedly in the Quran, mm -hmm. Muhammad said, Jesus is not God, he's a good prophet. Okay. Repeatedly in the Gospels, Jesus claims to be God. Where do you see that? I've read the Bible from front to back. I do believe that with people saying that, that's interpretational. I've never read where Jesus said, I am God. I've never seen that. You're right. Jesus never says, I am G-O-D. Instead, in John 8, 58, Jesus says, before Abraham was born, I am. The Jewish people who are listening pick up stones to stone him. Why? Because they understood. Yahweh, their name for God, I am who I am, Jesus applied it to himself. And they were going to stone him for blasphemy. And Jesus didn't say, time out, you misunderstood. Drop your stones. No, Jesus stood by his claim. Before Abraham was born, I am. Remember after Jesus rose from the dead, he appeared to the apostles, except for Thomas. Okay. The other apostles came up to Thomas and said, we saw Jesus risen from the dead. Thomas said, uh-uh. I refuse to believe unless I can see Jesus with my own eyes. I refuse to believe unless I can take my hands and put them in the nail prints in his hands, take my hand and thrust it in the spoon in his side. One night all the apostles were together, we read in the Gospel of John, including Thomas. Suddenly Jesus stood among them. Th Jesus walked right up to Thomas and said, my man right here. Take your hands and put them in the nail prints in my hands. 
take your hand and thrust in the spirit in my side. And Thomas, stop doubting and believe. Now, Thomas's response, ma'am, is crucial. Thomas hits the floor and says, my Lord and my God. Now, Jesus' response is crucial. Jesus looks Thomas in the face and says, you believe because you've seen. Blessed are those who will believe even though they have not seen. In other words, by accepting the worship of Thomas, Jesus is obviously claiming to be God. No, you're right. No Jewish person would say, worship me. Go on, come on, guys. Worship me. That didn't blasphemy. Jesus also never said, I am a biological male. The sky is blue. There are so many things that Jesus didn't say. And actually, when you read through the Bible, you'll never see a place where Jesus said, I am not God. Now, many Muslims will come to this passage and they'll say, no, he did. He said, no one is good except God alone. But what they don't realize is that Jesus also said in John 10 that he is the good shepherd. So if no one is good but God alone, why does he call himself the good shepherd? In Mark 10, Jesus is exposing that the man thinks he's good, but only God is good. And he's also exposing that the man doesn't recognize Jesus for who he actually is. But he's very comfortable calling himself the good shepherd because he is the good God who has taken on flesh and laid down his life for his sheep. There's truth in what Jesus says. There's truth in what all the prophets say. I have no doubt in my mind about that. And, but when you put somebody in the position of God, that is just like, that's, if you're God, I wanna say, if you're truly God, you can do, if you're truly God, you wouldn't have to eat. God doesn't have kids. God doesn't have human, humanistic, I, I beget, God was not begotten, he doesn't beget, he doesn't, I mean, it's un, he could take clay, he could take dirt, he could take a rib and create, you don't, there's no need for that. Mm, I don't, like, I can't, if you ask, if you could, can you truly explain the Holy Trinity to me? Just basic English, can you explain the Holy Trinity to me? Jesus never uses the word Trinity, and I don't have to use the word Trinity. Instead, in Mark chapter 12, verses 29 to 31, Jesus repeats the Shema of Israel. He says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbors yourself. So obviously, Jesus stuck to strict monotheism. Okay. But then, Jesus went ahead and talked about his Father as being God. Then he went ahead and talked about himself as being God. And then he went ahead and talked about the Holy Spirit as being God. So he stuck to one God, but three dimensions. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, whatever you want to call that is fine with me, but let's just stick with what Jesus talked about. A lot of Muslims will say the Trinity doesn't make sense. As if that's meant to confuse us Christians, of course the character and the nature of God is not fully comprehensible by men. He is God. What we do is we see how God has revealed himself to us and we trust him. A lot of Muslims love to say that the Bible has been corrupted, but then quote from the Bible when they try to explain why Jesus is not God or why God cannot be a Trinity. But we see here Jesus saying when he commissions his disciples to go forward and baptize in the name of the Father, of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We also see in Genesis chapter one, how the creation works. We see the Trinity in action. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water and God said, let there be light. So notice that there's God, there's the spirit of God, and then God speaks things into existence. And John 1 tells us further about how the world was created. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And all things were made through him, through the word. And without him was not anything made that was made. So we see Genesis laying the foundation of our understanding of God as triune. And then the New Testament further cementing that understanding. And this is why we see later on, the Bible says God made man in our image. He says, let us make man in our image. Why? So we see in the one species, man, male, female, they come together, they produce a child. We see the diversity and unity within us as a creation. And that's because we reflect the triune creator in whose image we have been made. Jesus talked about God, my Lord. Like, doesn't it say throughout the Bible, you are children of God, you are the children of the Lord. No. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that anywhere in the Bible. In John chapter one, it says that if you put your faith in Christ, you become a child of God. Okay, so That's you're a child says. of God, right? Those who put their faith in Christ become a child of God, correct. 
I do not become Jesus. I do not become part of God. I become a spiritual child of God that is very different from Jesus, who made this unique claim to be God in human form. I have yet, even from the things that you've said to me, seen an instance where Jesus claimed to be God. Jesus well, I told you very clearly, in John 8, 58, Jesus says, before Abraham was born, I am. His listeners had no problem understanding what he was claiming. They picked up stones to stone him for blasphemy. And secondly, I told you that when Thomas saw Jesus risen from the dead, Thomas bowed before Jesus and said, my Lord and my God. And Jesus blessed Thomas for that and accepted worship. Well, if I accept worship from him, I am claiming to be God. If I say to you, if I'm a monotheistic Jew, and this guy gets down on his knees before me and worships me, and I say, boy, you are outstanding. You've seen the light. It's a claim, I'm God, worship me. It's healthy, it's right. Okay, if, you can't if, escape that. And sometimes when you're having debates with people, rather than dealing with the points that you're making, they wanna just continue running around in circles. And it's really important to keep bringing them back to the implications of the truth that you're showing them. Now, if you wanna see another debate with Cliff involved, then check out this video. I'll see you there. Peace and blessings.